Up first, we're going to have quarterback Braylon Braxton, 269 total yards, five total touchdowns, three passing, two rushing the other day, was the Sunbelt Conference Offensive Player of the Week and recently named an Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award Honorable Mention nominee that came out about 30 minutes ago. That's for players from the state of Texas. Nice. A lot of information to process there, but um, you know, j just you know, how do you evaluate your performance uh, on Saturday, and just um, what have these last couple of days been like for you as some of those, you know, awards and recognitions come in? Uh, I feel like I played an efficient game. You know, the guys around me played really, really well. You know, the offensive line was moving people, making my reads easy. The running backs were creasing stuff. You know, keeping the keeping the chain short. You know. And only having to really make plays when, when they absolutely need to be made. But honestly, I just feel like it was a team went all the way around. Just to kind of get into game planning a little bit uh, as you get ready for Georgia Southern this week. Uh, anything early stand out to you when you look at the, what they do, uh, how they try to get to the quarterback? Anything maybe that uh, concerns you or impresses you? Uh, you know, just every week when I watch film, you know, it's always, it's always interesting because, you know, people don't really – People play the same defenses, but, you know, it's always interesting to see. You have to think about how people are going to play against us. You know, they're going to have to prepare to take away the run or they're going to try to prepare to take away the pass. So, you know, just looking in and really diving deep into Georgia Southern this week, you know, I'm going to probably get a little bit more information as the week goes on. But early thoughts, uh, they play fast and they play hard. <clears throat> they got some, some big dudes up front and they got some guys that run well and cover well in the back end. So, you know, I feel like it's going to be a good challenge for us this week. And I work nights, so I stay up late. I saw the helmet sticker. When did you find out that you got the helmet sticker? Did you get a lot of people from home uh, shouting you out? Yeah, my my relatives they love that stuff. You know, I I didn't really I didn't really know what it was until Coach uh, Coach Everett he told me about it and he was kind of told me a little bit more about it. He was uh, the first person to actually bring it to my knowledge that I wanted though. But I mean, it was a cool thing to win. You know, it was pretty nice. Was there a moment where you realized on Saturday that? Coach's uh, curveball was going to work because uh, the first play comes to mind like they had no clue <laughs> what was coming. Then next thing you know, you, you have a nice lead uh, in the game. Yeah, I realized that it was going to work in pregame. Uh, I don't know if y'all was there for it, but they kind of tried us pregame. You know, we were out there warming up. Their whole team tried to circle us at the 50 yard line, and that kind of ignited our whole team. We already had energy coming into the game, but I feel like when they did that, I knew I was like, yeah, this is going to be a game right here. So. Uh, the quarterback room is, is obviously, you know, talented between you and Stone and, and Cole can do some good things as well. But um, just what has that dynamic been like as you guys um, kind of push to get the best out of each other, um, you know, in, in these early weeks of the season? And, you know, it seems pretty unself uh, – seems pretty selfless. Um, yeah. That <clears throat> no, I would definitely say it's a very selfless room. You know, all three of us, even Ja'Kai, Colin, and then – the other quarterbacks we have in there, we all love each other. You know, we all want to see each other succeed, and we all want the best for each other. So, you know, whoever it is, any week, you know, they're all they're going to get the support from everybody in the room. And I just feel like that, that gives you a load of confidence, knowing that guys are not there, you know, like just praying on your downfall and stuff like that. It, speaking of that, Braylon, is that why you have to have a close room? Because you got to be happy for each other when you succeed, right? If yeah. there's some jealousy or envy or something like that, it's not going to happen. So is that is that how you guys perceive your room, that everybody rooting for each other? Yeah, most definitely. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it's always a competition. And, you, of course, everybody wants to be the guy. But, you know, if, if you're not, you got to be able to be a good teammate. And, you know, you got to just be able to sit back and know that you're a play away. So... Lots of uh, receiver weapons. We've talked for a long time about how that might be one of the deepest positions on the roster. Um, just what have you seen from guys that are getting their chance to step up and, and earning their way to, to, to get some reps? Uh, yeah, that, that receiver room is deep. Those guys are closely knit as well. Um, you know, guys that are going to have to step up are guys like Tyshawn Chapman and Chuck Montgomery, you know, with the injury to move last week. Those those guys are gonna play a pivotal role in you know picking up the slack in the slot position. So you know we're, we're helping on those guys to step up big time for sure. How about the job the the offensive line did on Saturday? Kind of set the tone early and, and kept it going throughout the game. Yeah, I mean Coach Huff talked about it all week and 
week leading up to the game. You know, that game was going to be won in the trenches, and it was won in the trenches, you know. I don't think we – I didn't get sack none. I don't remember too many negative plays on offense. So, you know, whenever those – you get stats like that, that's how you know your offensive line is dominating the game. And when the offensive line dominating the game, it just makes the flow of the game real smooth. So. Anything further for Bray? All right. I appreciate y'all. All right, next up we'll have defensive end Mike Green. Uh, so far this season, 32 tackles, eight and a half. Tackles for loss, seven sacks. All three of those numbers are top five in FBS, and the tackle number is number two among defensive linemen. Questions? Just when you look at the film, um, what, what stands out to you from your guys' performance as a defense on, on Saturday? Uh, we're able to take away a lot of what you know, App State did well. Yeah, so kind of kind of like my interview after the game, um, I kind of emphasize uh, our defensive coordinator allowing us to go out there and make plays. Um, he put us in cer uh, certain situations that will allow us to make these plays. And uh, we just got guys on the on the defensive line. We got the, D uh, they got, um, the DBs and the linebackers that are just uh, great guys that you can rely on to make some plays. So I think the mixture of both of those kind of just uh, gives you the, I mean, the, the prime example of uh, how electrifying our defense can be. So early impressions, I don't know how much you've seen so far at Georgia Southern, but what do you see from them that maybe stands out and, and maybe somebody who does stand out to you from uh, that unit? Yeah, um, we know uh, they're, they're going to try to come out and run the ball on us. Um, they run a lot of gap scheme. Um, it's very common for them. Um, they, their, their quarterback is a little, I think he didn't, he didn't play last year, but um, I think he's been doing a decent job this year. Um, the, I think the, the, the left tackle, he's been there for some time. I mean, the right tackle, excuse me. Um, he's been there last year, so we faced him before. Um, we kind of got an idea what these guys are like. Um, we just got to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, and um, it just will uh, lead us to, to be a little bit more successful. Mike, first conference road game. It's going to be at night. They got a white out and all that kind of stuff. It should be a rowdy atmosphere. How much, uh, you've talked about it with Virginia Tech and Ohio State, but those are the kinds of atmospheres you guys like to play in, right? Yeah, and I think those games early on in our season kind of uh, made us prepare for times like this. I know they're going to try to uh, go out there with a lot of energy and things like that. Um, we faced teams that had a lot of energy. Um, the only thing that we just have to focus on is continue to, to play the way that we've been playing, regardless of the circumstances and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so I think the, the games that we played already um, kind of just defines that we can play in these types of environments. So if we do what we're supposed to be doing, that uh, it wouldn't really affect us that much. I know there's a little history between Marshall and Georgia Southern, you know, go back a little bit ways. Where would you put that? Uh, you know, is this one almost up there with App State as far as uh, getting ready for, getting amped for intensity, rivalry aspect? Yeah, um, I, I think um, when, when two teams kind of have this old rivalry or uh, continuous rivalry, it kind of brings more energy to the game. Um, it makes it a little bit more fun, of course. Um, of course, there's going to be things that come more challenging um, when it comes to like env the environment and uh, the times and stuff like that. And those are just like factors that, that can sometimes take you off track. But I think the guys that we got and the coach staff that we have um, kind of kind of like allows us to, to separate from that um, barrier. And uh, we, we just got the people that, that are in this facility that, I mean, that is not going to really be a problem for us. Both of their running backs went for over 100 yards against Georgia State their last game. What do you notice about them? Uh, the, the running backs there, they're, they're good players. Um, they, uh, they do a good job of uh, cutting their fit, foot down and, and going straight down. I know they break, they break um, a good amount of tackles. So we just have to do a good job with wrapping them up. We got to take their, our tackling drills and circuits this week um, more intentionally. And um, we just have to break down the mechanics and go back to square one with uh, trying to get our footwork right just so we can uh, wrap up and make a tackle. Anything further for Mike? Thank you, God bless you. Speaking of another guy that you all know pretty well, we've got center Logan Osborne, <laughs> led a Marshall offensive line that produced nearly eight yeah, look, just just watching that thing again, it, it looked like you guys could run whenever you wanted to. Did you get that feeling pretty early in the game that that was going to be the kind of thing that tipped in your favor? Yeah, we we went out there and we uh, we did our jobs. We executed. Um, I thought Braylon did a heck of a job. Our running backs did a heck of a job. 
you know, I don't think it was all on us. Sometimes we uh, put them in bad situations and they made a play. Um, but overall, I thought we, we played pretty well, enough to win the game. You both, Braylon and Stone, have the ability to run. Um, is that kind of one of those things that was, you know, you knew your job didn't change too, too much when, when, when Braylon came in the game? And, you know, how does that consistency help? Yeah, I mean, that's why we do all the reps in camp with different guys and different rotations. So you have that uh, camaraderie, that, that feel of uh, how my, what's the pocket going to be like for Stone? What's the pocket going to be like for Braylon? So uh, just knowing what, how those guys play, you know, it helped us a bunch, especially getting extra reps in practice that week. Uh, we went out there and we were, you know, guns blazing. We felt com uh, confident and comfortable. Their statistics on defense may be a little deceptive. They've given up, sure, a lot of yards, but uh, they're a pretty good unit. What are you seeing from those guys? You know, are they pretty fast, pretty physical combination? Yeah, what, the, what makes them, I think, separate from other defenses is their uh, determination to get the ball out. They created a lot of turnovers, a lot of fumbles. Um, they do a heck of a job punching the ball out. So, uh, other than that, like they're they're really big up front. They're physical. Uh, their linebacker is really good. Number one, he reminds me a lot like Eli, Eli Neal. Not the biggest guy, but super athletic, and, and uh, he's a field general. He's going to make plays. Other guy, he's a former defensive end that they moved to linebacker. So he's a big guy. He's physical. He's going to try to run through you. Um, their D line, they're you know they're physical. They're going to be big. They're going to come out and they're going to expect to win this game through their defense. I think. Look at your guys' offensive performance. One of the one of the the really bright spots has been the ability to protect the football. Um, what do you attribute that to? And you know, how does how do your practice habits you know make that a reality in the game? Yeah, that's all Coach Daggy and Coach Huff. Uh, the ball is the program here, and uh, we win games if we don't turn it over. And we've done a pretty good job of that so far. Um, and that's why we've had success. You know. With, with our offense and winning games so far is uh, not giving uh, them the, them the ball or a shot. You know, uh, our defense has done a heck of a job the past couple of weeks and given us the ball and we've been, uh, we've been uh, protecting it. So it's been working out pretty good. Anything further for Logan? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Logan. And next up we got DB Jacoby Henderson, five tackles, three passes defended with two pass breakups and an interception the other day, big boy pick. Yeah. Jacoby, coach said you were in his office a lot this week. You all spent some time together and looking at film. But how, how beneficial was that for you to, to hear it from him and then bring it out and put it on the field? Um, it was really beneficial. You know, uh, them first few games, uh, I didn't have no, like, bad games, but I just didn't feel like myself. And, you know, I was like, shoot, something got to change. So I was just like, like what, what could I do to help out my team more until, I guess, um, just bring more more value to the defense. Um, so I just went to Huff, and I was like, I got to start watching film with you, my my DB coach, and then just, of course, on my own, uh, I watch a little bit more. And I think that helped out a lot more. You know, not that I wasn't ever watching film, but just seeing, like, different perspectives and then just having all that in my toolbox, you know, it helped me play faster, um, gave me more confidence. And... Yeah, that's pretty much it. And you were put to the test pretty quick in that game. They take a yeah. downfield shot. You come up with, you know, w with the breakup there to to start the game off like that. How much more um, energy and confidence did that give the defense when you kind of take away, you know, a big shot like that right away? Um, you know, it gave us a lot of energy. You know, especially coming from me. You know, because I feel like if you take a shot that early at somebody. I kind of felt tried, so I was like, okay, it's going to be one of them days because, you know, they came out pregame talking crazy to us, um, which I wasn't going for that. So I was already on one because you ain't going to try, you know what I'm saying, my family, and then think I'm just going to just sit around and just let y'all do it. So them trying this, you know, I think that that gave us a lot of energy uh, real early. What do you see from this offense? Uh, I know French leads the way, but they've got a lot of weapons, and uh, they can go, they can run at you, they can pass at you. you know, from your point of view, from your standpoint, you know, who's the big challenge for you, and, and what do they do well when they're successful? Um, I think they got some good receivers. You know, uh, I think all them boys they can run, they can catch the ball pretty good. Um, I don't see no big challenge. You know, it ain't nothing that we ain't never seen before. You know, I think if we all do our job, we all come out uh, with the right mindset, prepare the right way, um, everybody on the defense should be okay. And, 
Yeah, that's really it for that. Some some talented guys, obviously, in this secondary. Um, you know, how, how much does a guy like JJ kind of being the field general? Been he's been around college football a while. How much does he help? Um, you know, you guys get in the right positions and, and develop. I'm saying JJ, my guy. You know, um, I was just telling uh, Hub like. Shoot, when I see JJ in the post, I'm like, that's my that's my dog on superhero. You know, I, he made me definitely play more comfortable. I can play more aggressive whenever I know uh, I got JJ behind me. Um, same with all the other safeties, you know, Amir, AG, all them guys. You know, when I see them behind me, you know, I know they got my back. And I know when it comes down to them covering, I got to go protect them. I got their back. So, you know, us having that tight bond, um, I think it definitely helps us on the field. Anything further for Kobe? All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice day.